Hello, my dears. Welcome to Lady McCreepster's Night Noise Horror Podcast. It's the weekend, and I'm hoping you're not so relieved that you get to escape work and your boss for a while. There is nothing quite as bad as having to work for a terrible employer. In this evening's tale, from creepypasta.com, our protagonist is not so lucky. So come now, my dears. Lean in closer, and we'll begin. My boss is an absolute dipshit. Sorry, I hate to be so blunt, but that's just the way it is. My name is Sarah Collins, and I work as a personal assistant for a private law firm. It's probably safer for you if I don't mention where. Anyway, back to my arsehole sleazebag of a boss. He's a short, little, fat man who walks around the office like a total big shot. Rolex watch, Armani suit, you get the picture. He's also got one of those ridiculous moustaches that look like a gerbil sleeps on your upper lip. He's a completely sexist pig and treats me like garbage. To give you an example, the other day he walked past my desk and pretended to trip, spilling a giant glass of water over my white blouse, making my shirt see-through. It was so embarrassing. I would have left ages ago if I didn't need the money so much. Simon Jones is his name. He orders me around like a dog, with no respect or praise at all. But back to the point. The other day, after his usual rounds of berating everyone in the office, he headed to his private lift to whisk him away to the safety of his ridiculously large office. Yet, when he pressed the button, a screeching noise of metal on metal filled the room and smoke billowed through the closed doors of the elevators. It was broken, which as you can imagine, made for a pleasant morning for the rest of us. Not. He stormed into my cubicle, his stash twitching furiously. I don't care how you get it done or how much it costs, but if that elevator isn't fixed overnight, it's coming out of your pay. He leaned closer. Slut, he whispered. I lowered my gaze, my face burning ferociously. Yes, sir, I mumbled. Unfortunately, this would mean that I would have to spend the rest of the day searching for a repairman. After two hours of searching, I had made no progress and I realised I was screwed. When everyone had left the office and it turned to 9pm, my fingers scrolled down the web page further and further, but I thought it was pointless. What sort of mechanic is open past 9 My heart fluttered when I saw the next ad. It didn't stand out and the wording was dull and boring, but there it was. Mr. Mechanic. We fix everything. It also said that they were available whenever needed. I called their number, which was really unusual. 005-555-555. A voice picked up on the other end. Male, but no emotion whatsoever. Hello, Miss Collins, it said. Uh, Hey, I replied before getting straight to the point. He was patient, and when I finished, he said, I will depart shortly. I thanked him and hung up. I didn't realise then that I hadn't mentioned my name yet. He arrived faster than I had expected. His grey overalls were matched by his grey cap that both sported the slogan on the website. He was tall and unusually slim, and his eyes were dull and glassy like marbles. I led him to the elevator and told him that I'd be catching some sleep in my office. An hour later, I woke at my desk, a pool of dribble formed at my mouth. The office was eerily quiet. I looked up and the mechanic was staring at me from the door to my cubicle. All finished, he said. Great, you're a lifesaver. What's the charge? I replied. He told me there was no fee, as it was an extremely simple job. 
I thought he was joking, but then he nodded at me, took off his hat, and left. I locked up and went home and dreamed of men with grey hair and glass eyes. Simon Jones strolled around his office impatiently whilst drinking a glass of bourbon he had poured himself two hours earlier. He was waiting for the CEO of a competing company to arrive so they could attend lunch together and discuss the civility of their situation. In frustration, he threw his glass against the wall and it shattered everywhere. The phone at his desk buzzed and he jogged over to pick it up. Mr. Jones, the competition has arrived, sir. Good, was all he said before slamming down the phone and heading to his elevator. He pressed the button and the doors slid open silently and smoothly. He smiled to himself and adjusted his tie around his bulbous neck. Whoever that dumb assistant of his had hired, they had done a good job. Jones took one step forward, but his foot found no purchase and he fell, screaming 34 stories down an elevator shaft to his death. After my boss died, his brother took charge. He was a great guy and gave me a promotion and a pay raise. A touch of class. There was an investigation, but when tested following the incident, the elevator functioned perfectly. I was asked to show the police the number and the web page of the mechanic I had called, but the page had disappeared, and when I called the number in front of the police, a mechanical voice informed us that the number did not exist. However, one warm evening, I was walking back to my apartment and a grey van swerved around the corner. The glassy-eyed man was behind the wheel. It may have been my imagination, but he turned quickly to me, doffed his hat and gave me the briefest of smiles before disappearing around the next corner. I never saw him again, but the words on his van, overalls, hat and web page are forever stuck in my head. We fix everything. I guess that was one rare case of where the advertisement was, in fact, very accurate. Thank you for joining me, my dears. If you enjoy this podcast and channel, do consider becoming a member of my dark family on Patreon. As a member, you could be eligible for discounts on my Dungeon Essentials, what some mortals call merchandise. Your support means a lot, and it helps keep this channel and podcast going. Go to patreon.com slash ladymacreepster for more information. Even a dollar goes a long way. Thank you for visiting, my lovelies. Till next time, sweet dreams. <laughs>